Today, so long and thanks for all the fish. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and the latest one that is post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. And boy, this is a big one because I'm going to share with you today my plans for the next few months. The truth is that the last couple of years has been pretty uncomfortable for me. You'll know, of course, that Jill died more than a year ago. And I've spent quite some time trying to get to grips with that and all the complications and implications of that rather painful journey. Prior five years, of course, I was spent very much nursing her through her illness. And a few months ago, it came clear to me that I needed to break out because, frankly, I was pretty lost. And whilst I could continue to work hard at creating videos and YouTube and all the rest of it, um, my satisfaction levels had pretty much drifted away. So it is sometimes necessary to take a step forward to really break out. And that is what I have decided to do. So in about a month's time, I am going to move back to the United Kingdom. Of course, I grew up there, came out here to Australia nearly 30 years ago now, and I've enjoyed my time in Australia, but I have a lot of friends and family back in the UK, and I think the time is now to move back. In fact, what triggered it, interestingly, was a property that some years ago I saw and I thought, gee, if that ever came on the market, I'd like to buy it. Well, guess what? It did. And so I have. And I'll share with you a little bit of the YouTube advertorial relating to the property. You'll see that it's uh, pretty attractive. So the property was built about 20 years ago and it's on the outskirts of Bath in southwestern England. And it's pretty unique, actually. It's got a sort of quad layout with a couple of grassy areas. And it's a single story place. And the previous owners have done it really, really well. It's very attractive, as you'll see. And it's got enough space for a studio, as well as living areas, and of course, the normal other things you'd expect. But one of the things I really like are the gardens because they're quite enclosed. And interestingly, one of the other attractive things is that they are great for the dogs because, yes, I will be taking the dogs to the UK. Um, <laughs> some people will say, why? Well, because I can, basically, and uh, I couldn't leave them. Of course, Luna and Misha were actually Jill's dogs. She got them two or three years before she died. She wanted some company, and we had to go down to a farm in Canberra to find them. At the time, it was through COVID and there were very few dogs around. So Luna and Meteor have been through it with me. So they're coming to the UK. And we'll be able to run around these gardens and hopefully we'll enjoy the local environment. Now, I won't go through the whole of the video, but you can see that it's quite a nice, attractive place. And as we go and look at the main area, you can see that actually there's enough room for my grand piano there. So that's where the piano's going. And beyond that, in the other part of the room, there's plenty of space for the studio and the other things that I want to do. So it's pretty attractively laid out. Now, I'm not going to run through all of the rooms, but here's the other outside area. So there's a fountain and uh, it's surrounded by trees. So it's a pretty attractive little place. It's a much smaller garden, actually a much smaller house than what I have now. So that is going to be my base, certainly for the next few months and possibly beyond in the UK. Now, just a bit of a history. Of course, I started the DFA blog more than a decade ago. In fact, that was the last time when I'd come back from the UK, having visited that previously the last time. And that was before Jill really started getting sick. But beyond that, I wasn't able to get back. So I've got a lot of visiting to do, a lot of traveling to do, and the place in Bath will be pretty useful in that respect. Now, the next thing to say is that the place I'm moving to is to the outskirts of Bath, a place called Coombe Down. Believe it or not, it's actually in North Road. <laughs> Funny that. And it's very close to National Trust Woodland and Parkland, 
and very close to the National Trust property at Prior Park. And here is a little bit of a video that I shot last time I was back in the UK. It's a gorgeous area, looks out over Bath, over the countryside. There are a lot of natural walks and uh, other areas. The dogs will love it there, I think. So that's the news with regard to where I'm going. Now, of course, the obvious next question is, what does that mean for DFA and for IOTP? Well, I will be dialing back the show making now, probably after about the 7th of March for about a month, whilst I relocate and pack everything up. The studio will need to be packed down, of course. Some of it's going to storage. Some of it's going to go to the UK with me. So for a little while, I won't be making regular shows. But rest assured... I still want to continue to make YouTube shows and focusing still on Australia and Australian property. And I will continue to run the surveys and I will be making the monthly updates. And I hope to recommence my live shows on Tuesday evenings, probably starting sometime in April. So look out for that. Now, with regard to the interests of the People channel, it depends what John wants to do because, of course, we were always in the studio together to make our shows. That won't be possible now, so the question is whether John will want to do it virtually or not. I'm very open to that. If he would like to do that, then I'm very happy to continue talking with him on the interests of the People channel, so watch out for that. And the other interesting thing is that I've also been asked and encouraged to start doing the same sort of survey work 
that I was doing in Australia in the UK. So I'm actually going to start running the same surveys on the same sort of basis over the UK. And after a few months when we start accumulating data, we'll be able to make comparative data between Australia and the UK. And there's also a significant opportunity to take it to the US too, which I'm also exploring. So watch this space. And I guess as I come to reflect on my time creating shows on YouTube, we really started making those daily shows from 2017 and succeeded in our objective of making at least one show every day, which is actually pretty remarkable. I'm still hoping to get back into that similar pace once I get settled in the UK. There will be a bit of interregnum though in the meantime. But I thought it might be worth just reflecting on one of the early shows. Now this show was actually from 2017 and it was called Another Nice Mess, the Property Imperative Weekly from the 11th of November 2017. You can check it out, there's a link below. <laughs> I've certainly changed a little bit from then, but you know, time marches by. And back in 2017, I was still worrying about high household debt, the problem with what happens when house prices might fall if interest rates rise, all of those same issues. And I was particularly concerned about first time buyers and property investors and how they were going to fare if the market turned. Well, it took a long time to turn, but it is turning now, of course, and I do expect to see continued losses over the next few months, despite, of course, some of the spruikers still claiming that somehow magically the property market is now on the turn again. I'm not sure that it is. And we've also done, of course, a number of other things through the last few years, the cash ban, and of course, relating also to the branch closure processes, uh, which we've been chasing quite recently, and the gold and a few other things too. Now, the other thing, of course, I've been doing is looking after the Asbestos Awareness Charity, and that will continue. I've still got other directors here in Australia, and I'll still be a director. And we're gonna to continue to lobby for reform with regard to asbestos. But of course, it is a tough ask at the moment with so many other pressures on the government. But unfortunately, more people are still dying unnecessarily because of asbestos exposure. And I'll be continuing to raise that as we go forward. So to come to the end of this show, this is not cheerio goodbye and thanks for all the fish, quoting Douglas Adams, but more just a slight reset in terms of a new challenge, a new opportunity, a new location, but still very much doing the same sort of things, still wanting to hold people to account and still worrying about the broad macroeconomic picture, the philosophical question of how do societies work? What does neoliberalism do to us? And how we can actually protect ourselves and our families and businesses from the ravages of government policy and big business. Those themes will continue and I hope to extend my network with more people from the UK. I've already had a number of people reach out for me and I do have quite a few followers in the UK as well already. So that's going to extend that part of the channel. So keep watching. I will be making more shows before I finally disappear. And even then, I'll probably make the odd ad hoc show as I travel around and as I settle in the UK. So the last thing I want to say is this. I want to say thank you for supporting me and my work on the channel over the last few years. It's an amazing community that we've created and I hope that we can preserve that community and allow it to prosper and grow and perhaps even become a greater force for good and for change because there is still much to be done. And so whilst some things will change, some things will remain the same. Still doing analysis, still thinking about the big picture and still thinking about the interests of the people and thinking about how households and businesses can protect themselves. So keep following, keep watching and thanks for your support. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. See you again soon.